that there's a different formula to figure out what size disc to make half a sphere, a round bowl versus a flat bottom. But uh, when I first started making uh, spiders primarily, uh, that kind of a frying pan, when I first started doing them, I just tried to pull the sides up. And they really weren't working terribly well. And then I started making the bowl-shaped ones, and friends of mine started teasing me about making walks. But, and one of my friends that was teasing me about making walks actually then said in a serious con conversation, when do, you, when do you think the Europeans started frying food? I said, well, I have no clue. And he says, well, I think it was after Marco Polo went to the Far East. So maybe the Chinese did have something to do with Europeans and frying. Don't know. Good story anyway. But eventually what I discovered is after making a piece, I made a bowl with a lip on it. Um, to use upside down as a uh, candle holder for some sort of candle holder and I, I didn't like the way it turned out so I set it off the side of, and had it sitting on my bench for a while and I, I kept looking at it and kept looking at it because the flat bottom pans were the ones that were giving me the hardest time because I again I kept just trying to pull the sides up and leave the center flat and I looked at that bowl for a while uh, what happens if I'm gonna just push that center back down of the bowl. And that's when I started making frying pans differently. The flat bottoms and the round bottoms all start out the same. I make a bowl. The difference is on the uh, flat bottoms, I don't fuss as much about making the bowl really smooth before I push it back and flat. That's one of the big differences. And the other thing that I've learned is it depends on how deep I make it as to how tall the sides, how, how straight up and down the sides end up. I have to kind of anticipate and go a little bit deeper in that area. And again, I haven't figured out any kind of a formula for it. Um, what I will do with this is like I did with the small uh, wax catchers, is I'll start on the outside and I spiral into the center. And then I'll come back out. And I, I'll go in a spiraling fashion in and out a couple times and then um, at home, I have a, uh, a big piece of round stock that I had a machine chop dish out the center of it for me and face the other side flat that I use a lot of times for flattening the bowls, even if it doesn't fit over it. Having the flat surface to, to drive down on is very helpful. I can use other things that I have with me here, like the swedge block, I can set it up. Um, and I'll, I'm going to turn this into a flat bottom. It's going to start out as a bowl, and then I'm going to push it back. And one of the other things, um, I don't know if this vise is going to work. I found out yesterday it's a little bit bigger than I like, but it might work for the frying pan. Is The frying pan is going to have sides that are cupped because of the way I shape it. And I, want to, I, I don't want those cupped, I want them flat. So I'll have to I'll take that out as well. And we'll see how far I can get. <coughs> now, recently one of my uh, one of the guys I consider a mentor that spent 19 years in the shop of Williamsburg told me that technically spiders in the 18th century are round bottom skillets with legs were called just that, skillets. Um, and I don't know a whole lot about the history of those things. Again, it's one of those situations where people give me a picture in a book and say, make me this, and I figure out how to make it. And I would love to hear more about the history on some of these details. If any of you folks know, please share. What gauge is this that you're starting with? This is 14 gauge. Good question. I didn't say that earlier. I I found that I was getting better results by going to a little bit heavier because I used to make them out of 16 gauge. And um, 
I found I liked it a little bit better, but it's a lot more work. So, on the larger frying pan, I took a steel grinding ball and welded it to about a three inch diameter round piece of stock, partially forged and partially cut dovetails in it, and I slip it into my large power hammer, top die, top die grinding ball, and cylinder bottoms will fit over the, the framework for the sow block for the base of the hammer. I take the and it makes life a whole lot easier to rough them in with the power hammer. But it takes a lot of finesse because I'm not, I don't need a lot of strength. And I use the larger hammer because of the, the larger throw. So I don't mind working with a heavier material now because I have a tool to make it a little bit easier. How do you cut your desks out? Um, I have a Beverly shear. It depends on if I have the sheet in stock, if I have the time and I have the money, sometimes I have the guys with the plasma cutter cut them out for me. Um, sometimes I just do it by myself. Beverly Shear is just a wonderful tool for doing something like this. I've got a cheap one from Harbor Freight that actually works pretty well. I have absolutely no clue how these things were made 200 years ago. Uh, a coppersmith I used to do some stuff for sent me a copy of a newspaper article from the late 17th century and I lost it. But there was a mention about only two frying pan makers left in England or something like that in the late 17th that they were stacking the plates together. And that's all I know. Uh, I would assume they had some, they might have been using uh, water-powered uh, trip hammers and dies, I don't know. And I have no idea the history of spinning when they started the spin pan. Glad to learn uh, more about it. Bottom. That that center part is just coming really tight. 
The other thing that I have to watch when I get around to pushing it back, it'll want to wrinkle as well, and I deal with that. Um, but there also gets to a point where it will start doing what I call the oil, oil cam routine, where it just goes back and forth. Yeah. What is this form and fill you use? Do you make that? Is that form and fill you never get to? I do not know what the intention of this hammerhead was. It was flat on both sides, and I picked it up at uh, Quad State when uh, a couple of guys from Ohio I know bought out uh, the remaining stock from this company that was in Akron, Ohio. They had a box of, uh, they had a row of all sorts of neat stuff. And they had about six or eight of these left, and I, I said I want them all because I teach occasionally. And, I just rounded off the one end. You saw the fact that it's off the end. I'm sorry. You flat block. block also. Four. Swedge block at the bottom. Swedge block, what about it? What is it? It's a cylinder bottom. Okay. I thought you were talking about the hammer. Uh -huh. oh, I don't know about it. Uh -huh. The bottom of the Now the metal's hot. Thanks for the question.
out of reach with this hammer. That's the reason that working on stuff like this is why this handle is getting dinged up. So when I get into doing serious bigger frying pans, I normally have to switch over to this tool. Uh, I, I avoid it as long as possible because it's very unwieldy. But I, I made it so that I could reach into these deeper pans. But I do know it will get warm. 